Welcome to In Christ. This is Pastor Alfonso Espinoza, St. Paul's Lutheran Church of Irvine, California, Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Today is Wednesday, January 27th, the year of our Lord, 2021. And this has been a, a great week for observances and remembrances of some of the saints in the history of the Christian church. This last Sunday was uh, St. Timothy, pastor and confessor. And then on Monday, January the 25th, was the uh, conversion of St. Paul the Apostle. And then on Tuesday, January the 26th, uh, the church remembered St. Timothy, pastor and confessor. Of course, I'm sorry, St. Titus, pastor and confessor. That's, that was on Tuesday, St. Titus. And what I was going to say, of course, um, St. Timothy remembered on Sunday and St. Titus remembered yesterday, Tuesday, are often thought of side by side, both pastors and confessors, and indeed are a representative of Paul's three pastoral epistles, uh, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and Titus in the Holy Word of God. Today, Wednesday, January 27th, you keep all these dates right, the church remembers St. Chrysostom in the 5th century. Another faithful pastor, powerfully used by God. Um, and so we're going to remember uh, St. Chrysostom in our prayer today and also read a little bit about uh, directly what he wrote um, regarding the faith, which is just an astounding message for us today. So we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, today, the psalmody is based on Psalm 1. I want to read uh, verse 1 and 2 aloud. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. Verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When the Old Testament uses the word law this way, it's all encompassing. It is the sacred Torah. It is the it it is uh, properly also properly translated as the instruction of God, which is another way of referring to the whole of God's word. Certainly, both strict law that convicts us of sin, and strict gospel, which gives us the greatest relief ever known in the universe, because we are forgiven all of our sins in Messiah Christ. And the psalmist is is teaching and proclaiming by inspiration of the Holy Spirit as the Lord leads us to know our delight in his word, in his instruction, upon this we meditate day and night. Why, why would we do that? Because we know that in it, the Holy Spirit works through it to give us the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. That's why, thanks be to God. The Old Testament reading is from Zechariah chapter 4, verse 1, through Zechariah chapter 5, verse 11, just a heads up. Get the Zechariah in the section is definitely what we refer to as apocalyptic literature. It's based on symbolic language, figurative language. It's it's very much uh, Revelation-like or Ezekiel-like or the second half of Daniel-like, a very very uh, apocalyptic in in nature. Um, so I I just want to um, I want to call attention to this wonderful work. Uh, it's it's extremely important. Obviously, every every book of the Bible is. But it's here that we encounter this little verse, uh, Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Then he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's an incredible scripture. God is going to work his mighty work to deliver them from captivity, go back to the promised land. How in the world could this ever happen? In other words, we often see things behind, before us that seem impossible. How are we going to scale that wall? How are we going to get past this problem? And of course, we are eager to use all the resources of our own ingenuity and of humankind in general. However, God says clearly, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And that's capital S, spirit. 
by God, God's spirit, the Holy Spirit, by the spirit. He gets it done to bless his people. Thanks be to God. The New Testament uh, lectionary is from Romans chapter 15, 14 through 33. I'm just going to read verse 18 of Romans 15. It sounds a lot like uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 2. Uh, Paul saying, I, I resolve to know nothing else among you except for Christ Jesus and him crucified. Here we have in Romans 15, verse 18, for I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, to imagine that we have any way of bragging about what we do or what we are is ridiculous. We don't have a leg to stand on because we're sinners. But the good that God permits to come from our lives is there. Why? It is what Christ accomplishes through his people, baptized into his name. Hallelujah. Amen. I said that I would read something from John Chrysostom. This is from John Chrysostom himself. Uh, the words are profound. Um, you know, no, this is not Holy Scripture, but he is clearly presenting what the Scriptures teach. And uh, this, is a, this is a faithful pastor, John Chrysostom. Quote, Jesus Christ gave himself a ransom, he said. How then was he delivered up by the Father? Pardon me for a second. Let me start. Let me start again here. This is John Chrysostom. Quote, he gave himself a ransom. He said, how then was he delivered up by the Father? Because it was of his goodness. And what does ransom mean? God was about to punish them, but he did not do it. They were about to perish. But in their stead, he gave his own son and sent us as heralds to proclaim the cross. These things are sufficient to attract all and to demonstrate the love of Christ. So truly, so inexpressibly great are the benefits of God has bestowed upon us. He sacrificed himself for his enemies who hated and rejected him. What no one would do for friends, for brothers, for children, that the Lord has done for his servants. A Lord, not himself, such a one as his servants, but God for men, for men not deserving. For had they been deserving, had they done his pleasure, it would have been less wonderful. But that he died for such ungrateful and obstinate creatures, this it is which strikes every mind with amazement. For what men would not do for their fellow men, that has, done, that has God done for us. Unquote, so far, John Chrysostom. A quick stanza from Thy Strong Word, the, uh, the hymn for the day. Give us lips to sing thy glory, tongues thy mercy to proclaim. Throats that shout the hope that fills us, mouths to speak thy holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, may the light which thou dost send Fill our hearts with alleluias, alleluias, without end. Let us pray. Oh God, you gave to your servant John Chrysostom grace to proclaim the gospel with eloquence and power. As bishop of the great congregation of Antioch in Constantinople, he fearlessly bore reproach for the honor of your name, mercifully grant to all bishops and pastors such excellence in preaching and fidelity in ministering your word that your people shall be partakers of the divine nature through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. 
as it is close to 3 p.m. that I present this, let us pray. Blessed Lord Jesus Christ, at this hour, you hung upon the cross, stretching out your loving arms to embrace the world in your death. Grant that all people of the earth may look to you and see their salvation. For your mercy's sake, we pray. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you always. Amen. Have a great day in the Lord. If you'd like to join, join us for a Bible study tonight, we have a co-ed adult Bible study in the book of Romans. Just send me your email. You can send it via messenger, and I'll send a um, app connection. I was going to say a Zoom connection. We would love to have you. Have a great day.